they're going to hear about systole and diastole. They're going to hear about systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure. What does this actually mean, right? So obviously with a blood pressure, we have a top number and a bottom number. So the top number is our systolic. The bottom number is the diastolic. So what does this mean at its first level? Here we go. Systole is contraction of the ventricles at the bottom of the heart, pumping blood, moving blood forward. That is the action phase, right? Diastole, what that is, is the relaxation of the heart, right? Now, when we're talking about blood pressures, what we're getting is a value, a number of the pressure of blood moving. So remember, our top number is the action phase. The bottom number is a re relaxation phase. And we get numbers based on that. And that's your blood pressure. So we got that out of the way. Now, preload versus afterload. Quite simply, preload, what this is, is blood returning to the heart. That's it. Preload, remember, when blood returns to the heart, it comes from the venous system, up through the IVC, down from the SVC, and then it comes in to the right atrium. Correct. That action, blood returning to the heart, is the amount of preload, right? So, I'll read here, preload, the amount of blood returned to the heart. Remember, think, it's the right side of the heart where preload, the action is, because that's where blood returns to the heart, right? After load, after load is defined as the pressure in the aorta at the left ventricle must pump against to move blood forward. If we have a problem with our after load and the left ventricle is so weak it can't push blood forward into the aorta, which is in heart blood flow, where we're gonna go next, we go from left ventricle up to the aorta, we have a problem. Blood backs up, right? If on the preload side, we don't have enough blood returns to the heart, we have a problem, right? This is why we go over all these key terms. Automaticity and contractility. Sounds crazy, but it's so simple. Automaticity is this, the cardiac muscle cells. They have a special property about them. They don't need the nervous system to tell them to fire off, to take action. The cardiac muscle cells have automaticity and they automatically work. That is automaticity. Contractility is how strong the strength of the contractions of the heart, of the heart's ventricles to pump harder or pump not as strong, right? That's contractility. You gotta know this for cardiology, cardiac output, stroke volume, and a heart rate. And I'm gonna break down this equation for you. It to be so simple for you, hang with me. Then I got a bonus one for you, so hang with me for that. Cardiac output, what that is, is based upon liters per minute. Cardiac output is the amount of blood that the heart is able to pump in one minute. The amount of blood, it's measured in liters. Now stroke volume is measured in milliliters. Obviously it's smaller, okay? Remembering that if we have one liter at 1,000, milliliters that's how it's measured right now going back stroke volume what that is it's the amount of blood ejected pushed forward in one contraction one beat now the heart rate is the amount of full contraction or beats heart beats in one minute here's the equation to see how efficient what our cardiac output is in one minute Cardiac output equals stroke volume times heart rate. Super simple. Let me share this with you. Remember, cardiac output is based in liters per minute. One liter equals a thousand milliliters mLs. Okay, we got that. 
Now, stroke volume, remember, stroke volume is how much the amount of fluid that's being contracted moved forward by the ventricles. And the heart rate is how many times your heart beating in a minute. So here's what we have. First, I have normal values. They have given you two different equations where both end up being normal. So let me share this with you. So at rest, a normal cardiac output would be between five and six liters per minute at rest. A stroke volume would be 50 to 100 mLs normal. The heart rate normal, 60 to 100 beats per minute, right? This is by the you know, textbooks normal for all this, right? Now, an equation for you. Our stroke volume is 100 mLs, right? Well, let's say my heart rate is at 60 and my stroke volume is 100 mLs. 100 mLs, so basically 100 times 60 gives me Give me 6,000, but 6,000 mLs is equal to six liters. Exactly. So the answer, six liters per minute, cardiac output. Great, now what about this one? I mix it up, I give you the most average numbers that we can get. 72 for the beats per minute, which is in your textbook uh, normal heart rate, and 75 for mLs. Well, I do the math. 75 times 72 equals 5,400, which really means 5.4 liters per minute, right? Knowing this, if I only gave you two out of three, you could fill in the gap, right? And this is equation number one. Now, let me give you one a little more advanced. This next equation has to do with something called the ejection fraction. And let me explain to you what this is. In this realm, we're talking about heart transplant patients. When we hear this, we're talking about heart failure patients, uh, cardiac disease patients. Typically, we're throwing around ejection fractions. Let me explain. So the ejection fraction, what it is, 50 to 75%, plant that in your head, that's normal, okay? This fraction determines how well your heart pumps blood from the left ventricle, which we know the left ventricle pushes up towards the aorta and blood goes to the your rest of your body, right? So we pump blood into the heart blood flow. And diastolic volume is the amount of blood that is in the ventricles before the heart contracts. Roughly, it's around 120 mLs. Now, to remind you, because in the equation, stroke volume, again, the amount of blood ejected per contraction, that is 50 to 100 mLs. So we put this all together, we can figure out what is the patient's ejection fraction, determining how much blood is in the ventricles before the heart contracts, and then what's their stroke volume. Now here's the equation using stroke volume and diastolic volume and how we get our ejection fraction, remember, a normal ejection fraction is 50 to 75%. So if it's below that or very low, we're thinking about heart transplant, heart failure, heart disease, um, heart attack patients. So here's what we have. The EF equals stroke volume over N diastolic volume times 100. So I can show you here. Let's say we have 70 mLs as our stroke volume. We have 120 mLs as our N diastolic volume. We do this division here and we get 0.58. Now, if you go ahead and do it in your calculator, you'll get 0.583333. But to make it simple, I just put 0.58 to simplify it for you. So 0.58 times our 100, we get 58 as 58%. Now, you could say again 58.3 if you want to, but 58%, is that normal? Yes. So that's normal between 50 and 75%. That is good. This is the equation. Remember, you're going to hear about this with very sick cardiac patients. Now, a lot of you asked in the comments about how to prepare for school, how to get through school, and how to pass at our EMT. The first link in the description is a study tool that I give to all my students to accomplish all of that. It's called the Video Vault. Inside the video vault is over 480 videos of content, audio files, worksheets, practice quizzes, our community group, 
What I do in the video vault is take all the concepts you need to know to pass school at NREMT and I break them down simply for you. So that way you just follow along with the videos, you follow the study plan and you pass. I give my students lifetime access in the first link in the description and I'll see you on the inside.